And the Justice Department has come under some criticism for its lack of major prosecutions stemming from the 2008 financial crisis. But yesterday, it did get a significant conviction in a case involving almost $3 billion worth of fraud. The man who led that prosecution joins us now, Assistant Attorney General Lanny Brewer. He's head of the Justice Department's Criminal Division. Uh, thank you, first of all, so much for coming in to talk to us about this. The man we're talking about who was prosecuted uh, is Lee Farkas, the ex-chairman of Taylor Bean and Whitaker Morgan. Edge, again, convicted in relation to a $3 billion fraud. Talk to us about how significant uh, a prosecution and victory this is for you. Well, clearly, Julie, it's a very significant victory and a significant prosecution for the American people, for the Department of Justice, and for our ongoing pursuit against those who help perpetrate the financial crisis. This was a massive fraud. It took an enormous amount of investigation by a whole host of regulators and the prosecutors, and it was a terrific team effort. And, you know, it's interesting here because he was stealing not only from his own company, right. but he also applied for TARP money, which seems, I mean, in retrospect, it seems quite brazen. I'm, I'm curious why this all wasn't done earlier, why this wasn't discovered earlier. Well, you know, this is a great example that these are very sophisticated, very difficult frauds. In this particular case, uh, the jury found uh, Mr. Farkas guilty of a, of a crime, a massive fraud that was perpetrated both by his company and insiders at Colonial Bank. It led to the failure of Colonial Bank and it led to the failure of TB but it was very sophisticated and it took a lot of investigation and that's just something we all have to remember many of these frauds are done by people who are inside have great sophistication but this is a great victory all of the investigators and the prosecutors involved worked tirelessly to prove the case now of course uh, mr. Farkas isn't the only person who was prosecuted in relation right. to this um, in fact seven people now total have been convicted but is it you say it was a very sophisticated fraud is it really only the seven people who were involved Involved, do you expect more prosecutions here, perhaps not even just from his own company, but from other companies, Freddie Mac, for example, potentially? Well, we're putting aside anyone in particular. In this particular case, what I've said is the investigation is ongoing, but let's not lose sight. The very top of TBW, the very top of it, all of the top of it, executives have now pled guilty. Also significant players at Colonial Bank who are involved. So this is a case where very top people have been held accountable and uh, we will take the wherever the facts lead us. We'll go in this case as we do in every case. Do you have any expectation as to what the, the punishment for him is going to be? Well, that's up to the judge, of course, but under the guidelines, given a $3 billion fraud, he will be facing, we think, very, very extensive amount of time in jail. No question about it. Now, it occurred to me as I was looking through, you know, what he did, that this is, even as sophisticated as it may be and linked to what was going on in the mortgage market at the time, sort of a garden variety fraud in that he was stealing money. It was, you know, pretty... Um, cut and dry in that sense. On the other hand, you have all of these other um, financial institutions where no one has been prosecuted, where it's not as cut and dry. And as I mentioned in the, in the intro, there has been some criticism of the Justice Department that this yeah. hasn't happened. What, what's your response? Well, first, Julie, the reason you think that this case is cut and dry is really a testament to the work of the investigators and the prosecutors. There is nothing cut and dry about what Mr. Farkas and his co-conspirators did. It was very complicated, it was very complex, and it was very hard to identify. So it's, uh, it's really a, a credit to all of them that, we are, that you today think it's so cut and dry. And just more broadly, we are investigating cases aggressively. We're bringing cases when we believe we can prove beyond a reasonable doubt the elements of the crime, and we're not bringing those cases if we can't, but we're gonna continue to pursue these cases. Mr. Farkas is one face uh, of the financial crisis. He's a big face in it. There are others, absolutely. And we've brought a lot of cases. I mean, there are a lot of investment fraudsters throughout the country who have been brought to justice, and it's just not fair or accurate to say that those people haven't been held accountable. That's not to say we don't have a lot more to do, but we've really accomplished, I think, a lot already. When do you sort of pass the sell-by date? Because I think, uh, you know, the, the public interest in this certainly is still there, but a lot of attention
attention is turning now to the deficit and to other right. matters in Washington. Don't you run out of steam at some point? You know, I don't think it's like a carton of milk that it just goes bad. We're going to continue to investigate hard. And if you committed a fraud and we identify the fraud, we're going to pursue you. And we encourage people to come forward. Our regulators and investigators are working hard, and we're going to continue to do it throughout for the years to come. But I, I mean, I understand that you're working hard and the investigations are ongoing, but what about an Angelo Mozilla? What about many of the other corporations that have been blamed for the crisis? Well, let's look at that. I mean, you talk about Angela Mozilla. I mean, that was prosecuted by an extraordinary office in Los Angeles, and they looked at it hard. But at the very same time, Mr. Petters was found guilty of a multi-billion dollar fraud, and he's in jail. Rothstein was found guilty of a billion dollar fraud, and he's in jail. Made of, of course, multi tens of billions of dollars, and he's in fraud. And we can go on and on and on with examples like that. So there are, of course, examples where for one reason or another, because of the specific facts, because of disclosure, whatever, that a criminal case wasn't brought, but there are a lot of cases where crimes were proved beyond a reasonable doubt. J just quickly here, do you expect there will be more prosecutions? Absolutely. Okay, fair enough. Thank you so much. Lenny Brewer joining us from the U.S. Justice Department to talk to us about the Farkas case, among others, potentially. Thank you so much for coming and appreciate Thanks for it. Thanks for having me, Julie.